Welcome to the off cycle. Uh, today we're going to be addressing an issue on my new 1987 Precision 18 setup. The issue is the front hatch that was on the boat when I got it um, was leaking. The corner of the glass is all peeling up. That particular hatch is kind of a custom made part. It's not a universal size and the way the deck is recessed to fit the hatch doesn't leave much room for variation in hatch sizes. Precision does offer a replacement hatch that's aluminum and it's kind of upgraded, but it's $960 and doesn't even include the internal trim ring to make it clean inside and everything. So what we're gonna be doing is actually cutting a new smaller porthole and glassing that in, regel coating the top of it, and uh, which is going to allow us to fit a smaller hatch uh, in the boat a more universal size so when i got the boat i was given this new hatch right here and which i, I thought great i have a replacement already i don't have to buy a replacement and all that so I, I pulled the old hatch out went to replace it with this and realized that this is too small for the cutout hole um, that led me down the rabbit hole of trying to find a replacement hatch, which, you know, led me to the information that it just doesn't, it doesn't exist, um, in that size. So the, the cutout hole in the actual boat is like 17.6, 17 and a half or something like that. And obviously you see the cutout hole size for this is 16. So it's an inch and a half short, just not going to work but we're going to end up glassing in the existing hole so that I can use this hatch. And this is a more universal size. It will leave more room around the recess of the deck for clearance for the, for the, um, for the lid and everything else. And if this were to ever fail or break or anything, you can just drop it right in. You don't have to worry about dealing with getting a, another custom hatch, uh, from precision or made by somebody else that costs you a thousand bucks. So this is the cutout port here. And the biggest issue with this is a combination of the size of the cutout hole, which is like 17 and a half, a little more, and how close it is to the recess of the deck. So, you know, your frame is gonna be like right here and a lot of hatches, the lid overhangs the frame just as, to help with the weather sealing and it, it's, it's tapered so it's not a, a trip hazard. And this just does not, the way this is, just does not allow enough overhang for the, for the lids on the like newer style hatches. Even low profile hatches have the same issue. I did purchase a, a lid from Bomar, <clears throat> the same manufacturer of the original one with the proper cutout size. And it fits in the cutout size fine. But when you go to close the lid, the lid overhangs this recess by about a quarter inch and it hits, it will not close. So we're gonna end up building a new new plywood um, frame in here, glassing it in from the underside, and then we'll fill in glass. We'll sand all this back so we can glass in the top, make it all flush. And then we'll probably tape off around here and um, re-gel coat this whole, respray gel coat this whole area so it matches and we'll have our slightly smaller hatch with more clearance um, from these recesses. So my first step today is, <clears throat> I've already got missing sections of plywood here that the old hatch went through the deck and screwed into. The top piece and this corner piece were all routed out because it was leaking in the corner. So I had a bunch of moisture damage in there. So those were taken out and I made new ones before I realized I was gonna have to do all this work so today we're gonna to be cutting the headlining out, taking all this out so we can glass underneath here and have to cut the headlining back. And we're gonna make an all one piece frame that's gonna fit in here instead of four different pieces. And it'll, it'll uh, make it more rigid. So you can get an idea of what you're gonna run into once you pull this headlining off. This is just foam right here, half inch thick or so. 
I ended up cutting the carpet back a little a little bit more. This is what I have so far. So I'm about ready to get the sander out and sand this foam down. So I did call Precision and confirm with them that this foam right here, you could glass directly to that. Um, it will take a bond. But the problem I'm running into is a lot of delamination of this foam to the fiberglass above it. Uh, on the port side over here, I was able to basically just pick large chunks of that foam out. That's probably what was contributing to a lot of flex over here that I was feeling when I walked on the deck. So that had to be taken all out. In the front here, you can see, yeah, you can see a lot of cracking here. And then over here, close, you can see, you could get like, yeah, you could get something underneath there and pluck it out. So it looks all smooth, but if I go glassing to that, it's just whatever, you know, whatever bond this foam has left to the original fiberglass deck, that's the only strength I'm gonna get. So I'm gonna end up taking all this, grinding all this foam out, I think. Um, I just don't trust it. it. Even if it's stuck now, who knows how long it's gonna be till it delaminates. It's been in here for 35 years. So I'm just gonna take it out and ensure I got a glass to glass bond instead of having a layer of foam between it that I don't know what the bond is like to the original glass. So I'm gonna play it safe. It's gonna be a little more work, but it might save me a lot of work in the long run. This is where we're at so far. I used every cramp, clamp I had basically, but I've um, got the new, you can see the wood frame glass stand. So it's basically a glass, uh, two layers of chopped mat um, and then pre-soaked the, the wood frame. It's a pressure treated plywood frame with a thinned out resin, let that soak in until it was pretty tacky. And then went ahead and, and put it in. And this is what it, this is what it looks like from underneath. I've got an, my marine plywood frame that's saturated. And basically all it is is you've got, I did two layers um, strips all around the hatch, two layers, um, just to give it enough uh, room to conform and mash out. And uh, I've got the clamps keeping pressure on everything so I have no gaps between the existing underside of the deck and the new frame. And once that's all cured, then um, that will get glassed in tomorrow probably. I'll go ahead and glass this whole frame around um, and I'll work on the top, fill in the section that uh, there's a little lip to. That little lip will get filled in with glass and then the whole top and everything will get sanded down to raw glass. And then I'll go ahead and tape it off and re-gel coat it. Try to get the gel coat to match, kind of off-white, but if it doesn't match, I'm a, it's okay. It's a 35-year-old boat. It's going to be hard to match the gel coat. All right, it's day two. I've got all the clamps off. I've got a good, good bond. I don't have any air gaps or anything between the new wood frame and the underside of the, the deck. Got a really, really good amount of squeeze out all the way around by putting those clamps on and getting a good, good secure bond all the way around. So I think what I'm going to do next is I need to glass the underside, but before I do that, I'm actually going to um grind off the gel coat and everything here so I can start glassing this top lip. I'm gonna grind this out so I can do the bottom and then come up and do the top. And that way, while the bottom is wet setting up, I'm not creating a bunch of vibration and, and dust and everything causing the bottom to loosen. All right, we got this all ground out and tapered in. So now I'll start laying glass in here over this seam, build it back up sand it flush and then it'll be ready for gel coat. I'll do some wraps around the edge, um, but it'll be basically ground back to the end. It's just gonna have one layer of glass around the inside because the, the fit is pretty, uh, pretty tight. All right, I've got the top of this ground out and glassed in. So it gives me a little bit more of a, a build up so it's flush. Then I'll be able to sand it and then uh, mix up some resin and micro balloons to kind of fill it out and then uh, be able to gel coat 
over top of that I did fiberglass in the inside as well which was a giant pain obviously fiberglassing anything overhead can be a pain um, I started out with um, chop but it was way too thick uh, to make the, the corner um, of the new frame I really should have routed out the outside edge of the frame on the underside so I had a nice rounded edge to go around instead of having a 90 degrees bend to make anytime trying to make a 90 degree bend with fiberglass it can be a pain if you don't have a vacuum bag so I'll go inside and show you the inside so I ended up doing two layers of um, I had some six inch wide tape and ended up cutting it to like four inches and then I used the leftover two inch piece over top of that but it took the it's that bent around the edge much easier than that uh, that chop mat I had it was just I was either getting a bubble here on the edge or a bubble along the bottom it just couldn't make this sharp turn so the claw the uh, the tape I had barely did it but definitely the chop mat wasn't not was not gonna do it so I've got this top trim ring sanded down Nice and flush with the gel coat, a little bit lower than the outside gel coat, so I can fare in these holes and then I have a little room for the gel coat. I'm just gonna use a flush trim bit on the router now to um, I let it overhang. Obviously, that's why there's some uh, glass that's not saturated because it's, it's overhanging a little bit. So I'm just gonna use a flush trim bit to trim back to the original wood frame. Got this frame pretty well glassed in from the top, mostly smoothed out. Got it all flush cut on the inside. It's looking pretty smooth along the top. Just a couple dips and imperfections. I'm probably just mix up some micro balloons and um, fill in some of these larger gaps. That way the gel coat doesn't have to fill all of that and just make it easier. I'll only spray one or two coats of gel coat instead of, instead of several, but making progress. So I've got the gel coat done. It's sanded down from 800 to 1000 to 1500. Um, I, I'll probably, I may uh, buff it out with some compound and whatnot. It's not super, super smooth, but like I said, most of this gel coat is gonna be covered up by the window frame anyway, just this little bit around here and up here. So I'm not too worried about it. The color obviously doesn't match perfect, but because it goes up and to the natural line of the NA skid, I don't think it looks too bad. Um, I'm drilling my, I've got my holes marked out. I'm drilling, um, I pre-drilled them with a little uh, centering drill bit after I punched them, hit them all with a punch. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this top row drilled and bolted in and then I'll drill my other, start drilling my other holes, um, specifically off of the holes that are in the, uh, the hatch itself. This is just a piece of, uh, scrap piece of oak that I went ahead and drilled a same size hole, 3 16 hole in this on my milling machine. You could use a drill press if you had one, but I don't, I don't have a drill press, just a milling machine. But, and then I'll hold that up there and that's just make sure my hole is square on all axis. So it comes out uh, on, you know, perfectly square on the back side. But we're making progress. All right, I got uh, sidetracked today working on the trailer as well as another crack that I had to address at the at kind of the entrance of the cabin right where you step. There's like a wood support there in the corner. It was really badly cracked and Somebody's idea of fixing that was just fill it with gel coat or some kind of marine tex or something. Can't fill a crack and expect it not to stay a crack, folks. So here is the hatch. It is installed. I just put the hardware in, sealed it, cleaned all the all the uh, sealant around, the adhesive around it, and um, snugged it up. I don't tighten it all the way. I, I snug it up and then give it a few hours for that sealant to start curing and get a little stiffer and then I'll tighten it down. So once it's cured, you still get a little bit of squish. It'll help, seal, help it seal, but it is installed.
and uh, looks nice. Plenty of room in the front. Plenty of room in the back. Got about just about just about centered. I went ahead and just let it rest on the forward part of the part of the frame in there. So that's pretty good, but nice and low profile. I don't foresee any lines or anything getting caught on it, hopefully. Hopefully nothing goes down in here. That's my only concern is halyard line could go down in there and get hooked on this corner, but we will see.